Get up. <laughs> The Post is Houston's most popular food hall. There are over 30 high quality restaurants to choose from. As you can see, it's very packed. It's very popular. These restaurants are not mom and pop shops or any chains. These are all professional chefs. You get to see them face to face with no waitress in between. I like the fact that you can read their personal stories on their Instagrams too. There is a lot of pride put into the food here. I like the concept of a food hall rather than a food court for that reason. Food halls like this are a relatively new trend that you can now find in every major city in the world. And the way it's done here is done quite well. Here at the post, I was particularly intrigued by Andy's Cafe, which offers South American cuisine. I was craving ceviche and I have to say it was the best I ever had. And I love the red onions in here and the flavor of the tiger spills that they call it. It's all amazing and uh, it, it was $18 but I think it was worth it. Omar got roasted pork leg. It comes with an interesting side of japigacho. I hope I pronounced that correctly. They described it as potato cheesecake. Excellent. This is pork. And um, hominy. And this is the best part. I don't know what this is, but it looks like a potato or something. But it's so well done. It's really a taste, taste like. And it also has sautéed hominy. And I had that as a side too. I never had hominy before. I never even knew about it. I just learned recently that it is a solid kernel that they put in a solution like lime. And with some special cooking techniques, it becomes crispy yet soft enough to eat. I highly recommend trying this. My kids shared this bowl of bite-sized pieces of beef tenderloin, sausages, and french fries, and it has some sliced boiled eggs on top, but I learned later that it was too spicy and they couldn't finish it, so I thought with the french fries it was kid-friendly, but I should have read the details on the menu. John, what do you think? Yeah? What, what I like about this food hall is my kids are... They can be as loud as they want, and it's not as embarrassing because it's loud to begin with here. And um, the mess that they make is not as embarrassing. When they make a mess, it's not as embarrassing because it's messy to begin with, and the food is great, so that's why I like it here. Other than food here at The Post, they have concerts, vendors, and office spaces, all done in a very modern and cutting edge way. They describe themselves on their website as a hub for culture, food, and recreation, which to me sounds like a business friendly vision of what a vibrant downtown should be like, which is all the great stuff, but none of the grime. No homeless people, no buskers, no protesting, no political art. I mean, you will see art, but not the controversial kind of art, just business curated art. Of course, it would be nice to have a downtown without homeless people and other societal problems, but only if it was actually all solved, not ignored. What happens to these problems when they are ignored and more places like the Post are made to keep them out? Downtowns typically represent local culture because it includes local people of all walks of life. So what kind of culture is The Post referring to? Another perspective could tell us that a place like The Post brings in a lot of people that generates a lot of tax dollars that could solve these societal problems. But again, how can society even know about the problems if they are largely ignored? So that's how I got the feeling that it is kind of like a contrived downtown, which funny enough is on the corner of downtown Houston. I wonder what urban planners and anthropologists make of this hub. And it seems mostly accessed by cars, which 
By the way, the parking lot is really packed and they do charge you for it. The parking here is very nerve wracking. There's so many cars. Even though parking costs money, uh, people come here and I don't think the public transportation is too good in Houston. I did see a trail nearby and the bus comes regularly, but for some reason I get the feeling that it is not frequented by these other modes of transportation. Please comment below if you feel the same way and have a reason why. Or maybe it's just me coming from a pedestrian friendly community like Montreal. Omar, on the other hand, did not have the same reaction as me. He thought it was great all around. I'm definitely not knocking this place. It's super innovative. I love the fact that they repurposed an old post office and made it into a work of art. The second R in the three R's is to reuse after all. The post is surrounded by highways, skyscrapers, which gives a sense that it is an odd island. Hey guys, you guys, get up, get up. <laughs> Okay, guys, get up. Everywhere you look, you see a new concept. They have a rooftop garden, which I believe has a working farm. I absolutely love the rooftop garden. It's a great place to take children and for a culinary adventure. I just hope a fancy place like this doesn't charge the chefs and artisans a lot of rent money. I know how hard it can be as an artist. It's the artists and the chefs that are really bringing life to this place and making it truly special. Thank you for watching. I put a link to the music you heard in the description below and check out my channel for more family adventures.